Historical photos you've never seen before. Finished in 1886 and given to us by the French to be put in the New York Harbor, this is a photo of the copper giant known as the Statue of Liberty, while still under construction in 1884. This statue is 305 feet tall, meaning this photo was taken at roughly 200 feet. I can only imagine what working up there on a windy day was like. Winds of 50 miles per hour can still cause the statue to sway up to three inches. The man that's essentially responsible for making Colombia the murder capital of the world, Pablo Escobar, with his son in front of the White House in the 1980s. At the height of Escobar's career, he was supplying an estimated 80% of the cocaine smuggled into the United States taking in over $21.9 billion a year in personal income. He was often referred to as the king of cocaine. Three great baseball players. You may not recognize one of them, but you probably should. Jackie Mitchell, one of the first female pitchers in professional baseball history. During an exhibition game against the Yankees, a 17-year-old Mitchell struck out both Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig in succession. No one ever repeated this feat. Unfortunately, it only fueled the separation of women playing professional sports. Shortly after being struck out, Ruth was quoted saying, I don't know what's going to happen if they begin to let women in baseball. Of course, they will never make good. Why? Because they're too delicate. It would kill them to play ball every day. A few days after Mitchell played, in 1931, her contract was voided, and it was unofficially declared that women could not play baseball professionally with men. In 1952, that ban was made official, and a woman was not drafted into Major League Baseball until 1992. This photo is a beautiful portrayal of love, even in a time of fear and uncertainty. Dividing West Berlin from the rest of Berlin, this wall was meant to be a form of anti-fascist protection. The wall caused much tension, blocking a lot of people from work, homes, and family. It made Berlin go from the easiest barrier to cross between East and West Germany to being the most difficult. It's likely that this photo was taken shortly after the Berlin Wall was brought down in 1989. This enticing photo of Marilyn Monroe was taken on the set of Something's Got to Give. Marilyn Monroe became a sex icon in the 1950s with her modeling and acting career. This is especially impressive because there were few, if any, sex icons in the mainstream at that time. Something's Gotta Give was Marilyn's last work and went unfinished in 1962 due to personal troubles and Monroe's untimely overdose death. Had the film been finished, it would have been the first film in the sound era with a leading actor film nude. The attempted murderer of U.S. Secretary of State William H. Seward on April 14, 1865. I present to you Lewis Thornton Powell. If April 14th sounds familiar, it should. Powell was a conspirator with John Wilkes Booth, who assassinated President Abraham Lincoln the same night. Most people don't know that the night of Lincoln's assassination, John Wilkes Booth met with three other men to plot the killing of Lincoln, Vice President Andrew Johnson, and the Secretary of State, William H. Seward, all that night. Powell was not successful in killing the Secretary of State. He did, however, severely injure him. The United Kingdom's Queen Elizabeth II, dressed to impress and firing a machine gun in 1993. Not much to say about this, other than it's pretty badass. The Queen is known to give anything a try. She's known for riding horses, driving fast, and being an all-around lively individual. So this photo is a perfect representation of Her Highness. The United States 36th President, Lyndon B. Johnson in his amphibious car, 1965. As a prank, Johnson would drive the car straight towards the lake when anyone visited his ranch. This is a significant photo, because Lyndon B. Johnson was often seen as a wildly ambitious and tireless figure. Between the Civil Rights Movement and the Vietnam War, he often worked 18 to 20 hour days without break and did not partake in many leisurely activities. In 1838, 
Luce Daguerre, the inventor of the daguerreotype process of photography, took this photo. Aside from being an incredibly early photograph, it's also the first photograph to include a human being. Because the process required an exposure time of about 10 minutes, all moving things have disappeared from the scene. However, you can spot a man in the bottom left-hand corner who just happened to be having his shoes shined as the photo was being taken. The thylacin, commonly referred to as the Tasmanian tiger, is now extinct. They're a perfect example of people's effect on nature, hunted for sport and even further killed by diseases brought by the British. They were extinct by 1936. German for heavy Gustav or great Gustav, here we see Hitler gazing upon the Schwerer Gustav, an 80 centimeter or 31.5 inch railway gun. It was developed in the late 1930s for the explicit purpose of destroying the main forts of the French Maginot Line. The gun weighed nearly 1,350 tons and fired shells weighing seven tons to a range of 47 kilometers, 29 miles. Way before you had Google or Apple Maps, before MapQuest, before the internet. If you wanted directions and you were in a pinch, you'd have to call a navigation hotline. Now also keep in mind there were no cell phones, so you would first have to find a public telephone to use. And you couldn't just screenshot the directions, you'd have to use an actual pen and paper to write them down. We sure have come a long way. During the oil crisis, the roads were so deserted that people were able to have picnics on the highways in 1973. This photo is a beautiful representation of how people can find a silver lining in bad circumstances. John Quincy Adams, the sixth president of the United States, was the first president to have his photograph taken, the earliest photo still in existence at least. The daguerreotype was shot in 1843 a good number of years after Adams left office in 1829. In 1958, the King, Elvis Presley, was conscripted in the U.S. Army, and he was very insistent that he be treated like the rest of the soldiers. It's quite impressive how well he managed to handle his press and continued his success while serving in the military. Played by Willard Scott, the same man who played Bozo the Clown on WRC-TV from 1959 to 1962, a year after he stopped playing Bozo, he came up with the character Ronald McDonald for McDonald's. Probably the least creepiest clowns in history. Good job, Willard. The character Winnie the Pooh was named by A.A. A. Milne for a teddy bear owned by his son, Christopher Robin Milne. The basis for the character, you guessed it, Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin Milne's other toys, Piglet, Eeyore, Kangaroo, and Tigger, were also used in the stories. Owl and Rabbit, the other characters in the animation, were created by Milne himself. Hüger Traum in Flaugenlaugen, or H-Day, translates to the right-hand traffic diversion, which was on September 3, 1967, and was when Sweden officially shifted to driving on the right-hand side of the road. Although this picture displays mayhem, the switch was actually relatively smooth, with few accidents throughout the whole country and zero fatalities from the switch. First, this display of American pride was formed by 12,500 officers, nurses, and soldiers in 1918 at Camp Gordon in Atlanta, Georgia. It was a display of patriotism during World War I. But shortly after their huge display was photographed, the men and women at Camp Custer took this photo in response, which consisted of 30,000 men and women. Sure, they had a larger and slightly more impressive display, but we're all on the same team, right? Like and subscribe to quench your pop culture thirst.